Hey guys, today I wanted to talk to you guys about the biggest challenges that are coming to the 2020 real estate market and what buyers and sellers need to know. So first off, let's start by saying what a difference a decade makes. 10 years ago today, the real estate market was rebounding from the recession and it was in complete shambles. Today, it is absolutely booming. Uh, the last 10 years, I mean, they've fundamentally altered the landscape of real estate. So like coastal cities, I mean, those are on their way out. Affordable mid-sized cities are the new thing. I mean, the new in. Um, baby boom, boomers and Gen X, I mean, they're no longer the dominant forces in home buying. I mean, millennials are starting to wear that crown. However, it seems that home buyers still can't catch much of a break. Um, I mean, the last few years, we've seen a lot of challenges for buyers and those are expected to continue throughout 2020. And uh, that that's going to, consist of difficulty finding houses that are right for them, finding that perfect house for them and their young family, and the competition with the other buyers out there, especially in those affordable price points. So a lack of homes for sale, I mean, it's it's been something that has been there since 2015, uh, and next year we're actually expecting that inventory could reach historic lows. And although we've got single family home construction starting to see an uptick, um, we still don't have enough to keep up with that demand. But I mean, there there is a little bit of positive to this. So on the bright side, mortgage rates um, featuring the, the drops that we've seen this year, I mean, they're expected to remain reasonably low, uh, somewhere below 4% still. So that's kind of a positive to take away from this. So let's take a little closer look at some of the biggest factors that are going to influence the 2020 real estate market. First off, let's talk about affordability. Affordable price point homes are going to be key in the coming year. I mean, it's gonna be the bread and butter of the real estate market, especially as those millennial buyers start to cement their position as America's top buyers. So we've, we've hit, a, hit a ceiling as far as price growth goes, and it seems that buyers are just kind of starting to overpay at this point. Um, and while many buyers, I mean, especially with the millennial buyers, prefer to live in a big city like Detroit, uh, we are, actually seeing the unaffordability of a city like Detroit actually lead them to make a decision to buy in another city. So in the next year, metropolitan cities are going to see an unexpected growth while some of the larger cities see a slight drop. Um, and just because they've, I mean, they've simply become unaffordable and it's unobtainable for a lot of potential buyers. So we may even begin to see some of like the, the pricey Northeastern markets, some of those buyers even head here to the Midwest in search of some affordable housing as well as some solid diversified economy. Next, let's talk about millennials maturing into home buying age. So the largest group of millennials are going to turn 30 in 2020, um, which is known to be statistically the, the year that people begin thinking of buying their first home. So in 2020, millennials are actually expected to make up more than 50% of the number of mortgages taken out in the United States. So age is not the only factor that plays in here. So I mean, millennials are also beginning to build families of their own. And obviously when you build a family, that's something that influences that home buying decision as well. So unfortunately, even though we've got a ton of motivated millennials that are coming to the market, there is still gonna be a ton of competition as the number of homes may remain scarce. So this is gonna be an issue for a lot of them. So you guys may be asking yourself, where are the homes? So millennials are ready to go, ready to buy houses, but there's not enough of them out there. So Gen Xers and boomers, they're pretty comfortable where they're at currently. I mean, boomers are living longer, they're living healthier lives, and they're staying in their houses a little bit longer. And on the other hand, Gen X, they're not done raising their kids yet. They're not ready to retire. So unless they plan on upsizing, they're, they're just not so likely or not so inclined to make a move right now. So since these older owners aren't in a hurry to sell, and with the level of new construction still low, there's just not enough housing to meet the demand. And in previous year, the scarcity has driven the home prices up, but home price appreciation is finally starting to slow a little bit. So you guys may be asking yourself, I mean, why, why is there not more new construction um, to, to kind of correct the situation? Well, after the housing crash in 2008, um, it wiped out a lot of builders and the builders that remain, I mean, they were just so focused on those higher end developments where they can make a larger profit margin. Um, and we're, we're just now starting to see signs of a shift towards building those more entry level homes now that we're faced with an overwhelming amount of demand. But it's going to take a few years before that, that actually affects the market on a, on a larger scale. I mean, it's 
So how to buy a house in 2020? So I mean, if you're looking to buy an entry level home, you're gonna have a tough search. I mean, that's all there is to it. You should be prepared for it to take a little while. And when you do find the perfect home, you need to act quick. I mean, make sure you go into that home search with a pre-approval in hand. That way, when you do find that dream home, you can act fast, make an offer, get that offer accepted, and get on your way to a closing table. Those of you that have a little bit more money to spend and aren't looking in that entry level home market, you're gonna have a little more to choose from, a lot less competition, and you're probably even gonna have more motivated sellers as their houses sit on the market a little bit longer. And then how to sell a home in 2020. So, I mean, if you're going to be the seller of an entry level home, you're gonna have no problem at all. I mean, your, your property is gonna continue being the, the property most in demand next year. And if anything, you should just be prepared to move quickly. I mean, you're gonna have a flood of buyers coming in, uh, possibly multiple offers and possibly a highest and best scenario. So just make sure that you have um, things in order so that you can make a quick move if need be. The rest of you, I mean, you should brace yourself for a little bit longer wait, especially as your price point moves up. The number of existing home sales is expected to dip a little less than 2% next year. So the higher end sellers, I mean, you need to do your homework. You need to think about the competition that's out there and start thinking about pricing your home a little more competitively to spark a little more interest from the potential buyers. So if you guys are thinking about entering the market in the coming year, please, please, please reach out to us sooner rather than later so that we can help make sure that you are the best prepared when the time does come. It's always best to start the process early to make sure that you are in the best position to reach your goals. Stay tuned to our page as we strive to bring you guys nothing but value. We'll see you guys next time. Have a good day.